Today I want to talk a little bit about the Novachuk and Cold Jaws and the grippers that I make and uh, how to use all of them combined. This all came about when I bought another set of Cold Jaws for my Nova Chucks. I have four of them. And I have them from the very standard units to the uh, Titan, which you see on the lathe right now. And uh, I have one of the uh, previous models here. And here's the Cold Jaws that I purchased several years ago. These Cold Jaws that are on this chuck came in yesterday. And I've noticed a, a few changes and most of them are rather minor changes. For instance, you'll see the resolution of holes here is uh, greater than here. And by that I mean they've just uh, sprinkled in more holes so you have uh, smaller steps between the holes. And that's actually kind of nice because sometimes when you're trying to place things, uh, you put on one set of holes and maybe it was not quite tight enough and the other set you couldn't quite get the bowl in there. So I think that'll help. Now you see that I have the steel jaws on here. I think they're like the standard ones. And they're mounted on top of the cold jaws. That came about because they now package the current set of cold jaws with longer screws. You have to use steel jaws on top of them. I don't really know why they did that. You can kind of surmise that maybe they thought that you're getting more support here and therefore more strength. And I guess there's some merit to that. <clears throat> Although the attachment point stays the same underneath this. So fundamentally I don't know how much of a change that really makes. The previous ones came uh, with just the standard length screws and that's all I've been using for many years and I've never had a problem. So. Uh, I think I'll go back to just the standard size screws or standard length screws and forget about trying to stack these up because it's kind of cumbersome to put them all on at once like that. You have to get everything lined up. Uh, you'll see that I have these on here now and this was intended to be for a bowl that I'm going to uh, turn the foot on. And this bowl is kind of large. Uh, Let's see, in fact, let me get a scale. Uh, it's right out near the limits of what I can grab. It's just a, about a 10 and a 16th inch. And uh, I'm going to grab it on the outside. So that means that I had to put the cold jaws on my Titan chuck. If I put them on a standard chuck and try and open it up as far as it will go, this, this bowl here will not actually fit. So I have it on the Titan chuck and that's fine. Now the grippers I make are just like this. And uh, if you go to my website or if you've seen them uh, being used here before, you'll see they're a bit different from the grippers that they give you with the chuck. They're uh, made with a aluminum core here. And then there's a uh, slide-on sleeve, which is pressed on, actually. It doesn't slide on and off. You can't just slide this off. And that is the part that uh, grips the wood. I initially made these for bowls that have a lip that, unlike this one, it would fold over. In other words, it would round over and drop down. So when you went to put on the chuck, the, the outer edge was rolled down and it would actually be above the gripper. So I made these and that solved that problem. But uh, as a consequence of how I made them, they're much more round than the rubber that they give you. Uh, by that I mean they're just a lot more accurate. Another thing about these is that because of the aluminum core, when you tighten the screw down, it tightens up against the aluminum, doesn't affect the rubber or compliant surface that is going to actually grip the wood, unlike the ones they give you. If you tighten them up differently, one from the other, that's where a lot of your runout comes. And runout is when the bowl is out there and just seems to be wobbling very slightly, and sometimes it can be difficult to start your cut, even though you turned it round when you flipped it around and put on the cold jaws, now it's moving around. 
that's where that comes from. When you use these grippers, you really don't get that. So the old grippers here, I hope you can see that, uh, are rubber. And the new ones that came with these new uh, cold jaws are also rubber. But they're clearly of a different rubber. And there's slight differences. There used to be a lip here, very tiny, and that's gone. But fundamentally, they're the same thing. When you tighten up the screw on these things, they'll squoosh out. They'll get different diameters, and it really messes up with your alignment. So I don't use them at all for anything. Now, as I said earlier, when I made these grippers, it was intended to solve the problem of that lip. Well, when you're going to grip a bowl like this, clearly this goes right down to the surface. It's a nice, almost square edge. If you go to use that with my grippers, you'll actually encounter that you're going to fall right on that edge, uh, which is the support surface of the core of my gripper. You don't want to grip the bowl on that. That's hard aluminum, and it's going to make little marks in your bowl. So, what you can do to solve that is what I've done here. Now let me pull one of these off. This is nothing more than a strip of wood that I have a small piece of carpet tape on and that will go in between two of the grippers in the area where the bowl is going to go onto the chuck. And the way that works is this is higher than the lip on the gripper. So now you're going to engage up into this sleeve area which is where you want to. When you put this on, you go right up against those four pieces of wood. Then when you tighten it up, you're engaging the gripper and you're secure. The way you make these is really simple. I do it on my table saw. You want to strip, or rather rip a piece of a uh, strip of wood off of a board that is maybe a half inch, three eighths thick, it doesn't matter entirely, and thin, uh, say a quarter inch, that will clear the lip on the gripper. Those are approximate dimensions and honestly what the dimensions exactly are doesn't matter. The key point is they all have to be identical. And the way to do that is you just cut a strip of wood at one go on your table saw that's about a foot long. You cut it into four sort of equal pieces and there again accuracy is not important. And then you put a double stick tape on the back and put them on like this. And you're good to go. If you're going to use this method there's one next step you want to do before you turn your lathe on. And that is you reach in here and you take this out of the way. You want these off. The reason you want them out of the way is if you're turning and this were to fly out, it'd be a very bad day for you. It's almost inevitable that it's going to hit you. And uh, this is always harder than any part of your body. So you want these out of there so they don't come out like little pieces of shrapnel. Intuitively, it seems like, oh dear, I'm not really supported here now. There's a gap. Well, the grippers don't care. They're going to hold it in either direction, this way or that way. So it won't go in, it won't come out. I've done it like this many times, and there's no problem. Also, you can see as I'm turning this, there is no run out, like I stated. This bowl is perfectly centered on your chuck, and it will turn just like it did when it was on your face plate or chuck. As you had, see here, I had it on a chuck with the V, the v jaws holding it on the inside. And that's how I turned most of this. Now I want to turn the foot, and you want that thing to rotate true to your lathe. Now it will with these grippers. So I wanted to point out those little details about the previous cold jaws, the current cold jaws, how to use my grippers when you have an edge like this that doesn't roll away from the surface so that you can't just place it on the face of your cold jaws. 
and you can just index it out with uh, small pieces of wood like that and you're good to go. In fact, if you're going to do this on the bench and you have this laid flat, you don't even have to use the tape on those pieces of wood because gravity, of course, will hold them in place. Once you clamp this in into the chuck, you're good to go take those pieces of wood out of the way and uh, start your turning. I hope that uh, helps uh, people figure out how to do such things and uh, how to use not only my product but the cold jaws in general. Thanks for watching. I was going to uh, get ready to turn this, uh, just presented how to set this up in the cold jaws and how to use my grippers and such, and I thought about uh, how I mount this and have that gap there, and I'm sure many of you are probably skeptical. I say, oh yeah, I've turned this all the time, but you don't see me actually do it. So I thought, <coughs> let's do it. So I'm going to uh, start turning this uh, bottom. Now you'll see when I first start this, this will be uh, out of round a bit because this part I haven't turned since I turned it when it was wet. So it's warped a little bit and that's of course why you uh, return it. So let's fire up the lathe. And uh, let's make some chips. See, I got some of that bark out of the way, but I still got a little inclusion, but I'm going to roll that edge anyway and uh, make that go away. Every time I move uh, my <coughs> tool rest, I always spin this just to be certain. Uh, it's just a habit I have, and I uh, don't see any need to break it. Just leave it at that, I guess I could say, and so on and so forth, because I'll just continue to work this until I get it where I want it. But I just wanted to prove that, yes, these do hold fine, even with that gap in there. You don't need this resting up against the face of the cold jaw to be safe. Uh, thanks for watching.